Welcome to another edition of Chaplain John with Chaplain John Sayers, featuring special reports and interviews with people doing kingdom ministry in Tulare County and beyond. If you would like to be featured by Chaplain John, you can contact him at jnsayers at yahoo.com. And now, here's Chaplain John. Okay, journey to the cross in six minutes or less, not counting the introduction. I have been doing a series with the guys in the jail st all through Lent, and I called it Journey to the Cross because we need to get to the cross. And and the reason why is because a lot of us are going to be, this Sunday is going to be Easter, wahoo, great time. The Lord is risen. He's risen indeed. That's our Easter theme. But a lot of people will get there and they have not gotten to the cross or they forgot to go back to the cross. That's what Good Friday is about. I hope if you haven't been to a Good Friday service, maybe let this be your Good Friday service because I want to get you to the cross. Because you see, on Easter, he conquers death, but at the cross, he conquers sin, your sin, my sin. I At the jail, we've been doing this, journeying with Jesus as, as Jesus moves towards the cross. And we've been looking at events, that six minutes or less messages through Lent. I might do these through Easter too. And following different events in the life of Jesus. Well, last week, uh, this week, I'm, I am I took the week off. Uh, Gail and I doing some things, neat things together. But last week at the jail, actually, we got them to the cross. My Bible studies or the things I passed out. And I, and I shared with them uh, something called the seven last phrases of Jesus on the cross. And um, let me just share them with you really quick, these seven last words of Christ on the cross. And it's kind of a combination of all the gospels. On the cross, Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Oh, his love for us is amazing. He didn't throw lightning bolts down. Forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. And then he says, truly, I say to you, remember the two thieves on the cross? One thief is mocking him. The other thing, thief is saying, man, we deserve this. You know, and he says, and all he asked Jesus, the thief on the cross, all he, he doesn't even ask him for salvation. He says, will you remember me when you come into your father's kingdom? See, in a sense, he's repenting. He says, we deserve this. And Jesus says to him, this day, you'll be with me in paradise. Oh, that's fantastic. Jesus at the cross, there is Mary. He, uh, Mary, uh, he looks down at his mama. He looks at it and says, mother, here's your son pointing to John. John, here's your mother. Even on the cross, he, he, he wants his mother taken care of. Oh, talk about fully human, fully God, the humanity of Jesus. Jesus will, uh, on the cross, will say, I thirst. And I'm not necessarily going in the right order, but I thirst. And I think he's talking about physical, but I bet he's also talking about another kind of thirst. And and Jesus is on the cross and he 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 says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. On the cross he yells out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the people there are mocking him. See, even his own God has left him. Well, in a way, God did have to turn his back on God the Son. God the Holy Spirit, God, God the Father had to do that. But he's also, Jesus is quoting the scripture, Psalms 22.1. He's lamenting. He's being real. And then John records this. This is the grabber for me. John says, and he cried out his last breath. Before, and he says, it is finished. That is not a cry of defeat. That is a cry of victory. It's like God the Son is saying to God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, he's saying, we did it. We accomplished the task. We accomplished the plan. The plan that may very well have been set in motion even before Adam and Eve sinned. You remember in Genesis 1 and 2, it was fantastic. No sin, no curse. Adam, Eve, be fruitful, multiply. It was a great, no death. 
And then Genesis 3, sin came into them and it comes into us. And we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. That's what we deserve. But the plan was this. The plan was God the Son was going to have to be that atonement. He was going to have to come and live fully as us and be sinless, be sinless. And on the cross, and Satan is trying to get him to slip up all through his life. But on the but he doesn't, not even on the cross, he doesn't mess up. And he says, Father, we've done it. We've accomplished the plan. And all those who have a relationship with Jesus go to the cross and, and go, thank you. Because he died on the cross for you. He died on the cross for me. He died for our sins, the perfect atonement. Then you and I will really be able to celebrate Easter, which is coming up Sunday. When the when we say the Lord is risen, he's is risen indeed, because there he conquered death for you and for high. Oh, go to the cross. Hear him say, it is finished. He did it. Thank you, Jesus, for doing it.